I'm really getting to it day and night. I'm really in the game, I live that life. Fake them left and then I take them right. All right, I ain't going charging up a Tesla and heading into the cup mill here on a Thursday at 11 a.m. And uh, the cup mill is actually doing something today that I both like and hate at the same time. What I mean by that is they're still taking a dollar out of every pot, of course. That's like a tax, jackpot tax, I call it. But uh, in this case, they're actually putting it to use the right way. So what's going to happen is they're going to be giving away like $100 an hour, every hour, all day to a random person in the room. Obviously, I couldn't care less about that when it comes to going to play. But there are a lot of people that do. And you'll get multiple tables full of people that wouldn't play otherwise if it wasn't for this money giveaway. So as ridiculous as that may be on its face, it's still good for the poker room in general. So if you're going to take this dollar out of every single hand, I do think that is what you should do with it. As opposed to just giving $75 for quads, which doesn't bring anyone in. Or $150 for a straight flush, which brings no one in. So we'll see how this goes in terms of how this game actually shapes out. In terms of quality, I don't think it's going to be that good to start, but I'm hoping it'll get a little bit better later on in the day. Uh, my thanks to those of you who uh, recently have uh, subscribed. Subscribers are going up. View counts are going up. Really appreciate that. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. I think it's been gradually getting better each vlog as it goes along. All right. Let's see how this action is here on a Thursday at Peppermill. So I jump in the game, which was pretty decent. The first hand comes when the small blind opens to 15, and I looked out at pocket sixes in the big blind. I make the call. So at 30 in the pot, we see a flop of 10, 3, 4, rainbow. Small blind then checks, and with just pocket sixes here, I check it back. The turn is a deuce, and now the small blind bets 20 bucks. I make the call, expecting him to have ace high here a large percentage of the time. So at 70 in the pot, the river comes another four, and now he checks. I bet $15, looking to squeeze some thin value out of all of his ace high hands, which works perfectly. He pays off. Some pros don't agree with my tiny bet strategy in these spots, but getting that extra $15 in hands like this over the years has made me a lot of money. I open 9-10 of hearts out of the gun, and it folds around to the big blind who makes the call. The flop comes 8-9-6, two clubs, one heart. The big blind checks, and my chief concern here is how to get some money into this pot, because he's calling me so wide that he's unlikely to have hit too often. I bet $15. He thinks about it briefly, and check raises me to 40. I have a pretty standard call here, so I make it. With 110 in the pot, turd is highly above average. It comes at offsuit 7. The big blind bets out for 50 and I decide to raise right now in case he is on or is afraid of a flush draw. I raise to 125 and he lays his hand down. The hijack opens to 20 and I raise to 65 in the big blind with pocket 10s. He then decides to shove all in for $135. I obviously make the call, and he ends up having ace nine. The board runs out clean, and we take down a $270 pot. Shortly after that, against the same opponent, I look down at pocket jacks under the gun and make it 20. The button calls, that's the guy you just shipped with the ace nine. The small line calls as well, so with $60 in the pot, the flop comes out 865 rainbow. I'm at 40, and the button raises to 120. This is the first of several very difficult spots I got in on the day. Small blind folds, and I think it's way too weak now to just fold myself, especially given the way I saw him just shove in with ace nine, so I make the call. With 300 in the pot, the turn is the three of diamonds, bringing in backdoor diamonds. I check, and he bets 375, which is effectively an all-in. He leaves himself just $25 behind. So we talk about tough spots. I had just seen him ship all in with ace nine, but that was a much smaller bet. It seems like he would want to have one pair beat here 
to do this, but it also feels like he's calling me so light preflop that he might play pairs and straight draws this way. I tanked about it for about a minute thinking and finally decided that he would expect me to call him after seeing the ace nine hand, so I opted for the full. Not sure if I was right. I changed tables to a better game and immediately lose 200 when I flopped two pair against a pair and a straight draw. So the next hand came when I picked up pocket deuces in late position and I make it 15. I get called by the small blind and the big blind. With 45 in the pot, the flop comes 8-4 deuce with two diamonds. The big blind leads out for 30, a nice smooth call, hoping to keep the small blind in. He ends up folding though, with 105 in the pot, the turn is an offsuit 6. The big blind leads for 50, and I decide just to call with a plan on raising the river. With 205 in the pot, the river comes an offsuit 10, and again, he bets $50. I make it 150, he calls pretty quickly with pocket jacks, so we take down a $505 pot. We get a $20 open from an OMC in the cutoff, and I'm on the button with Ace King of Hearts. I make it 50. Yukon Brad Booth, making another appearance in the vlog, falls in the big blind. The cutoff calls, and with 150 in the pot, the flop comes Queen 10 8 with the Queen of Hearts. Booth checks, the cutoff checks, and I check. The turn comes the ten of hearts, giving me a royal draw. It gets checked to me, and I bet I take it down. Twenty dollar straddle is on from Brad Booth in this next hand, and I'm under the gun with kings. I raise to sixty, and the button re-raises to hundred and sixty. I thought about re-raising, but decided just to call. With three hundred and thirty in the pot, the flop comes jack. 7-3 with two hearts. I check, and he bets 250. I don't think about it for very long, and make the call. With 830 in the pot, the turn comes the four of diamonds, and I check. He then ships all in for $920. He had been winning on the day, which I do believe is a big factor in checking with another pro. He agreed that's a huge factor when making a decision here. He could be doing it with queens, but that's really the only value hand that I beat with a jack high board. But it just felt like aces to me a large percentage of the time here. I ended up tanking and making the fold. He doesn't show, but in a very sincere fashion, he told me that he had aces. And I believe him. Next hand comes and an OMC opens to 20 under the gun. I pick up pocket 10s in the hijack and raise to 55. Everyone else folds back around to the original Razor, who makes the call. With 110 in the pot, the flop comes jack 10 4 all hearts. He checks, and I bet 60 with middle set. He doesn't take too long with it and makes the call. So with 330 in the pot, turn comes the queen of diamonds. Under the gun checks, and I bet 100. He thinks about it for a minute, and raises me to 350, leaving himself about 350 left. I go into the tank, really feeling like that he has ace-king with either the ace or the king of hearts here, given the fact that he raised an early position and called a bet on the floor. He's an OMC. I was in the same spot last week, if you recall, so... That time I ended up making the wrong decision. They had the straight, I called and lost the hand. I didn't want to do the same thing two weeks in a row, and I was pretty strong with my read of ace king here, so I decided to make the fold. Hope I was right. Next hand comes when we get a limp in the low jack, and the cutoff makes it 15. The small blind calls, and I call in the big blind with ace six of hearts. The limper calls, and the small blind calls. So at 60 in the pot, the flop comes out ace, queen, four with one heart. A small blind checks, I check, and a low jack checks. The cutoff bets 25, which leads to the small blind folding. I make the call, and the low jack folds. So with 110 in the pot, the turn comes the queen of hearts. I thought about some line bluffing here with a nut flush draw to get him off a better ace, but I figured that he's calling me with all those hands that I have beat and folding all the ones that I can beat. So I decide to check. He checks it back, and the river is pretty interesting. It's another ace, so I make aces full of queens. 
I figure betting here is actually a bad play because it's very unlikely that he checks back the turn with a queen. So I figure I'll let him bluff. I check and he bets 50. I decide to check min-raise to 100, expecting him to fold the vast majority of the time, but also expecting him to re-raise as a bluff a small percentage of the time. That doesn't happen. He folds pretty quickly, and we make an extra $50 due to the fact that we didn't bet the river. A $10 straddle is on on the button, and under the gun makes the call, and I have pocket eights in the hijack. I raised a 40, the button folds, but under the gun calls. 90 in the pot, the flop comes out king 8 4, all diamonds. Under the gun checks, and I bet out for 65. Under the gun calls, so at 220 in the pot, the turn is an offsuit queen. He checks again, and I think I have a pretty standard bet here with a set of eights. I make it 125. He calls, and with 470 in the pot, the river comes an offsuit five, and now he leads out. After not wanting to do that the entire way, now he decides to bet into me. He fires $225. I now have a sick feeling in my stomach, but I just don't know the player enough to assume that he's going to slow play a flush here and lead the river. I end up being unable to get away from the hand given the line he took. I make the call and he shows ace nine of diamonds for the flopped nut flush. Next hand gave me a real look at what kind of player that guy who won with the nut flush really is. So I pick up ace king in the hijack and I see him open under the gun plus one to 15. I re-raise to 40. Folds back around to him and he just goes all in. If you're scoring at home, that is a $1,490 bet into a pot of $60. I'm never calling here with Ace-King, obviously, but it was frustrating that I was playing in a game where people are making plays this bad, and I'm stuck over a thousand bucks. For the record, I really feel that he's gonna have aces every time he does that because he was winning on the day and doesn't want to jeopardize his win by getting it in bad, so he decides to just win the hand right now and take the $50 profit and not risk any money. I don't think he's ever not doing it with aces because if I then have aces, he's just giving me his entire stack and he never wants to put himself in that position. I'm sure that some of you will disagree with this, but I'm very confident in the read that that's what he had there. Finally, we get an under the gun open to 20 and a call on the hijack. For me, making real hands hasn't really worked, so I'll try the whole bluffing thing. I look down at king nine offsuit and make it 95. Unfortunately for me, both players call. So with 285 in the pot, we see a flop of jack eight deuce with two diamonds. I have complete error. It gets checked to me and I fire $150. Under the gun calls and the hijack folds. So with $585 in the pot, the turn comes another eight. Under the gun checks and I am in no position here to give up. I figure queens or ace jack are his most likely holdings. I also know that he just felted a guy in a massive pot so he might want to preserve his win. I fire $300, he thinks about it for a minute, and folds. He claims to have had pocket queens. I don't know if I believe him, but I do think he had at least a jack, and I managed to bluff him out of it. So that got me out of the hole a little bit more than what I was, but I still ended up booking a significant loss of just under $800 on the day. All right, it's not sure if I have enough light here to even do this at this point, but it is, uh just before midnight here and wrapping up at about a 12 hour session and booking a $758 loss. And I don't think, I mean, certainly I've had days where I've run worse. I don't ever remember having a day where I was just in so many difficult spots with so many tough decisions. And if you ask me, I think I made the right decision on all of them. But obviously on some of them, I'll never know. Hopefully back at it tomorrow. All right, so it is about 10 o'clock on a Friday night, wrapping up a uh, about 10 hour session here at Peppermill. And you saw yesterday I booked about a $800 loss 
when I vlogged the session, and today I booked about a $1,500 win when I didn't vlog. I wonder if that's like Buster Posey for the Giants. On the days he plays first base and doesn't catch, he always hits better. I wonder if that's going on. When I'm focusing on vlogging, maybe I'm not playing as well, but I don't think that's what it was. I think I just ran better today. So, um, did get an interesting hand against Yukon Brad Booth once again, where he straddled 50 on the button. Just a $50 button straddle. I got pocket queens in the hijack and I make it 150. He instantly re-raises it to 600. And I have about 1,200 total. I just don't believe that he's gonna pick up aces or kings here in the straddle when he gets raised too often. So I shove it all in. I think it's a pretty standard play. He calls with ace-king, and we run it twice, and we chop. So, um, I could have been felted right out of the gate had he won both those boards. Instead, I roared back, won a bunch of small pots, and booked the win. So, um, pretty good week, and uh, about wrapping it up here, by the way. Uh, if you are a fan of dog video, don't stop watching this vlog right now, because uh, my wife Debbie tells me that uh, my dog's sister is going to stay with us for the weekend, another golden retriever, and then she organized some sort of dog meetup at the park with uh, my dog's other sister and his mother. So a total of four golden retrievers tomorrow. And I'm gonna try to vlog that for you. As always, hit the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. It does the channel a huge favor. Been growing of late, and I really appreciate those of you that have done it. But for those of you that haven't yeah. and have not created the account to subscribe with, yeah. please do that as well. I'm really getting to a day and night. I'm really in a game, I live that life. Fake them left and then I take them right. I ain't going out without a fight. I put on a show under the lights. Love it when they say my name on the mic. I like play, make them wanna show it twice. I like play, make them wanna show it twice. I'm the coldest, get it done in freezing rain. When I get in my zone, I can feel it in my veins. I go tunnel vision, ain't nobody that can stop me. I'm legendary, they just want the jersey on my body. Put up the numbers, people trying to say they love me. Work out every summer, cause the winter gon' get ugly. Feel like the world against me, got me going even harder. Take off like a rocket, I'ma snap it like I'm hot. When I go beast, how you gonna stop it? When I see the blitz, I just call an option. I'ma take my time, never leave the pocket. Man, it's not nice, so don't even try it. When I go beast, how you gonna stop it?